Yeah, oh, now they just eat it dry. All right, so, so I saw your thing about the uh, prong collar getting banned. I'm not really as against the prong collar as I am the... Uh, oh, you woke up in rare form. Oh, Obama in the pinch collar again. For She thinks it's called a pitch collar. Yeah. Yeah, it is a pitch collar around here, because I'll tell you what we do. We pitch them. Why sending you two links? I will explain your Israeli why your Israeli friend has the opinion that he does. I, I wish you would because it's it's not just that, it's you know he seems to believe the the US is the reason that we have some ability to stop terrorism and, and we don't do it. Or that we're not aware of it. I can tell you, David Muir is ramming it down my throat every night with a smile. That's why I'm swallowing it. A big smile. So watch David Muir. He used to be on in the middle of the night. I guess I always got up in the middle of the night because it's been years ago. He was in the middle of the night news. Anyway. Yeah, Aaron, that's my Israeli friend. I mean, he's probably not my friend anymore because he's probably blocked me. But, you know... It, it just irks me when people say, you know, that our president, which is basically the team that we've got watching over us, is somehow turning a blind eye or not doing everything that can be done. I mean, why this guy thinks that we... And that's what I told him. I said, Israel knows more about terrorism than we do. You know, you've got more Timothy McVeigh's than we do. Well, maybe they don't. One other enemy was next door. I don't really understand. I'll have to watch the... Uh, it's men in their wars. It's men in their wars. Summer was tossing and turning all night about ISIS. I said, Summer, before ISIS, it was Al-Qaeda. She's just so tossing and turning all night. And I said, you know, and I remembered what his name was because I was trying to explain to her, you know, the world that we live in where they were shooting our our presidents in the head and about Prince Charles' mm -hmm. uncle, Count Montalban, I think was his name. Stay so now. Count Montalban, or was that a serial? That was Count Chocula. I don't know. That's Count Chocula. <laughs> They blew his boat up out. I'm going to look it up. But, I mean, again, that was the world. You know, if you think we've ever lived in a world where terrorists didn't strike terror in our hearts, that's why they call them terrorists. You know, some are so worried about ISIS, and I said there's always been, there's always going to be an extremist faction of the population. I mean, there always has been. I mean, they used to just kill them. Well, they've always killed them in the name of religion. If you don't believe me, ask Martin Luther. And I don't mean Martin Luther King. I mean Martin Luther, the Protestant. Even though I think the other Martin Luther King was Protestant too. I think Martin Luther King was named after Martin Luther. How, what other conclusion can I come to? <laughs> Who cares? Uh, anyway, so. Now, all I know is, you know, again, that was my solution to Aaron, the Israeli guy. You guys are closer. I remember I told you when my dad worked for McDonnell Douglas or Boeing, however it was, part of his job was selling attack helicopters to other countries and I'll tell you who, where he went and sold a whole big bunch of them was a little country they call Israel you know so it's not like they're not armed or they don't have money or they can't protect themselves I just don't understand why they think we need to protect them it's not that we don't back anybody up but why would we Weird. and keep in mind I know Absolutely nothing. <laughs> well, I, I just don't understand it, I guess. I had not really seen this before. Such, uh, you know, pervasive people believing that our president's job is to guard the whole world. Russia's a superpower. Ask him. Tell them you know, to get their MIGs, 
And God knows, if anybody's got good spies... Russian? Yeah. Yeah, they do. There's a really good movie called The Falcon and the Snowman. It was Sean Penn. It was one of Sean Penn's early movies. Sean Penn and Timothy Hutton. You probably saw it, Stace. It's called The Falcon and the Snowman. And, well, let's just say Sean Penn was a, a drug dealer. If this is kind of giving you the... Yeah. <laughs> If this is giving you the gist of the title. Mm. This is what I don't understand. You know, Facebook has a bad effect on I me. Mean, I need to just upload my videos. My post today, my status was, uh, this was my status on Facebook. If you don't like a lot of dog videos, you won't like me at all. <laughs> From things YouTube taught me about life. <laughs> Now we gotta go do. Uh, oh, because I can't wait for Stace to see what I got for me doing. He spins, he twists, and he turns. In fact, we should get the camera. We should get the webcam because I train every morning in the kitchen. Interesting. I'm spinning it in all kinds of stuff. My girl, so explain to me why Aaron thinks this. You know, they want to say. You know, and like I was telling, you know, Summer that. You know, at, in, in a global world, the world knows, like, the German people have resolved. She didn't understand what that meant. But, <clears throat> you know, I, I would say, if anything, the Israeli people would identify themselves as people with resolve. And it's a war where you better get you some really good spies. I, you know, am I wrong? We need better spies. Well, that's part of being a spy. You know, but we need better spies. I was watching this, oh my gosh, this, uh, sometimes I start watching these enough. Just they, well, just, just the way they run, it's interesting to see how they run their life. Into. Anyway, the, um, thing was about heroin in Afghanistan. These, these, uh, the whole families are addicted. Yeah, All the, well, yeah, the fathers went away to Iran to work and brought their habits back with them. And, you know, it was this, like, you know, this chick, and I mean, she was putting her life at risk to go there because she was a British reporter um, and talking to these, you know, kids. And they've got, like, little seven-year-old kids that are going in rehab. These people are dirt poor. They don't have the first TV or anything. They live in these villages in the mountains that are cut off from society half the year. And that's where the majority of drugs are coming through. And then these, it's sort of like the ice cream man. They go around to the villages, and every single one of them, and they do it a lot of because it's cheaper than food. I mean, it's just, the, the level of poverty is mind-boggling. You know, so I do understand the people that say, and UNICEF and all these things that say, you know, that, that see a bigger solution, that don't think the solution is just wipe Syria off the map and stuff, but, you know, the level of evolution and education and all these, you know, emotional intelligence in these people is so stunted because of the brutal living conditions. And, you know, like they had this father that was getting opium for the dog, because, you know, Afghanistan is torn by war. And it was, you know, this one kid that was living on the street and, he went and lived in the country with his relatives, and the village got bombed by the U.S. by, you know, our big guns, and they had to pick up the body parts and put them in plastic bags. So, yeah, he's, you know, now living on the street, a heroin addict. So, I mean, it gives me less empathy for our heroin addicts here because I can see... Yeah, and they're devoting a lot of money to a, but they don't even really understand the concept of addicted children where the parents are actually, you know, they have like the woman of, oh, my son has to smoke the opium three times a day or he's in pain, and the one little girl, her arm was missing. So the father made it his mission to get this little girl, and there was no doctor, there was no doctor, so when they got bombed, there was someone it's honestly a miracle that the little girl survived. There was someone in the village that had some medical knowledge. Right from YouTube. You're better off then. And, 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 well, 
but they've got a right to live. I mean, people have a right to live and a right to a possible better future, but... Um, You know, there was a point, well, but, and this is what people, you know, the people, I don't know, but there was a point when the whole world was a third world country, you know what I mean? The whole world was a third world country. People rose up and, you know, countries became superpowers and different things, and, and, and a lot of it, it wasn't, you know, just... It really was built on compassion because if you you know part of the reason we love France and this country will always love France was back in the 20s and 30s. I mean, American artists were accepted in France like there were no place else in the world. I mean, that was you know France was always progressive that way, and you know, we'll always love them for that. But they they got it. Gotta get a little bit more resolved because they didn't learn anything from World War II. I mean, you know, we didn't get invaded in World War II, even though Justin Kennedy thought the Germans were going to come here through South America, which I used to think was kind of crazy, but now, after watching the boys from Brazil, I 